Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm so glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So in this lecture, we're going to look at anterolateral MI or myocardial infarction. So how to localize it, but specifically, we're not going to look at the acute, but something that's more a prior infarct, so an old one, or one that's indeterminate age. Okay, so we'll look at that one. So we're here going through our EKG coding reference guide. We're in part seven. In this lecture, we'll look at anterolateral MI, okay, and this will be the age indeterminate, okay, where we don't know when exactly it occurred, okay, so not really the acute findings that we've looked at previously. So if you don't have access to our uh, reference guide, all you have to do is put this link into the search bar, enter your email address, click submit, and when you do so, you'll get an email with a link that will then give you access to our reference guide, okay, so you can go through that. Um, and then if you're returning, all you have to do is simply put your email in and you'll have access immediately. Now, if you want to see our courses, our books, and other videos outside of what we have available online, simply go to www.ekg.md, okay? And then click on the EKG course and you'll see a number of different things we have there, okay? A lot of new things coming out, new courses and everything, so stay tuned uh, for that. Now, if, there's a number of uh, schools and institutions that are using your product, so if you are a part of an institution or want to group rate, simply uh, reach out to me, okay, which you could do at the EKG guy at ekg.md, and I'm happy to help you uh, get started with that. All right, so let's get started. So anterolateral MI, or one that's age indeterminate or probably old. So this is what we're going to look at today. And we want to see in this case, again, localized uh, findings to the anterolateral leads, which we consider V2 through V6, okay, as well as 1 and AVL. So these lateral limb leads, okay, and then we have V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, okay. Sometimes we'll refer to the anterolateral leads as V3 through V6, but you often see uh, V2 involved as well. So that's why we include that. One and AVL are the lateral leads, limb leads. Okay. Uh, the other thing we want to note in these leads when we're looking at the age and determinant, probably old form, is pathological Q waves. Okay. So pathological. Q waves, okay, and these are sometimes hard to identify, but you really want them to be at least 30 milliseconds wide and 0.1 millivolts, but I would say even probably deeper than that, uh, amplitude and depth, okay. Obviously, this depends on context, um, so it's hard to say just based on that, but that's one thing to keep in mind. Or QS complex. What is a QS complex? So if you imagine we have our P wave here, here's a complex. All right, are there Q waves there? That's the question. You have to be able to identify what a Q wave is. So this is a P wave, this is an R wave, this is an S wave, this is a T wave, okay? So what if we drew one like this? What is this? This is a P wave, this is a Q wave, a small Q wave, an R wave, and an S wave, and then our T wave. Okay, so what if we draw a complex like this? Okay, this all this here is your QRS. This would be our P wave. This is a Q wave. This is an R wave, an S wave. This is an R prime wave because it's the second R wave in that complex, and that's the T wave. Okay, the main ones we want to focus on when we're looking for prior infarct are these Q waves, these first negative deflections that precede that R wave. So they come before it. So that's important. If you see one of these negative deflections after the R wave, that's an S wave. Do not confuse those when looking for prior infarct changes. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So you're looking for Q waves, which are complexes that precede the R wave of the QRS complex. Now you have to be careful not to confuse small Q waves with actually pathologic findings, okay? Because some Q waves are normal and be, can be seen when we have the interventricular septal depolarization occurring, okay? Such as in the lateral leads, you may see it. Remember the left bundle branch is the one that does the initial depolarization across the interventricular septum from left to right. So those leads that are stationed on the left side will see a negative deflection, which is expected, okay? So again, 
looking here at these leads. So we, we spotted out the leads that we have to look for and the pathological Q waves. We want them to be wide and deep, okay? Imagine that you have your P wave. Here's a Q wave, okay? A QS complex is simply a complex that has pretty much only a Q wave, no positive deflection, all right? Doesn't really have that S wave, but we call it a QS complex, but it's really a, a Q wave that we're seeing there, okay? So that's what that means. And what we want to look for is the depth and the width. So the width of the Q wave as well as the depth of it, okay? And we said depth, at least 0.1 millivolts, but I would be careful, uh, really, probably want a little deeper, even up to three, but that's what we use here is 0.1. Um, and then 30 milliseconds, or remember one of the small boxes. So if you imagine from one thick line to another, and you have five small boxes in between, each one of these, the width of it is 40 milliseconds. Okay, so that's a 40 and from beginning to the end is 200. So you want at least one of those small boxes wide, then you can consider it to be a wide Q wave. Okay, the other thing uh, we want to see is no evidence of acute or evolving myocardial injury. So no ST segment elevation. Remember, if you have an injury pattern, you'll have the Q waves and the ST segment elevation. Okay, so we've looked at that previously. You can go back and review that. So uh, the leads here, we have V1, okay, is a right precordial lead that you may see involved. But in this case, we're looking V2 through V6. So notice that here in V3, you may say this is a small R wave and that one, and here's an R wave. And okay, you don't see it in V4, or V5, or V6, but why in V2 and V3? Well, yes, you may see a little anterior kind of uh, septal depolarization as it heads towards those leads, or even on the right ventricle being depolarized. But remember, there is very poor R wave progression. The R waves from going from V1 through V5 should increase in amplitude, it's meaning that these R waves here should continuously increase, and they're absent already in V4 and V5. So you should have something, if we go from, imagine this is V1, we'll have V2, V3, V4, V5. Okay, you should have something like this. You see the R wave getting a little bigger. So something like this. Okay, so notice that the R wave, which is these positive deflections, are getting bigger, so going almost up a staircase. And also the S waves are getting smaller, okay, to almost absent in V5. And notice in this, we pretty much have almost very deep S waves throughout all of them, okay? And absent initial R waves in these leads V5 and V6 and even V4. So we would call that poor R wave progression, okay? In the right case, poor R wave progression means that you have poor anterior forces. And in this case, it was a result of the patient having bad left uh, coronary artery disease. So causing this, um, these uh, sort of findings. So again, the poor R wave progression is another thing we should uh, mention here. Uh, the pathological Q waves. So notice you have these Q waves here that are certainly pathological, wide and deep. The poor R wave progression. And then here in the lateral leads, you almost have absent forces, okay? Very bad, very low forces in those lateral limb leads uh, that could be suggestive of uh, poor electrical conduction in that region. Also notice that here in the inferior leads, which are two, three, and AVF, you have some Q waves developing as well. And those are actually there previously. This patient presented with a really bad uh, left-sided coronary artery disease um, that had been present for some time, had a bad infarct previously, as well as the RCA, the right coronary artery was involved. And that's likely why we see those uh, poor amplitudes in the uh, inferior leads as well as some notching in those Q waves that have been present. So this was a patient with multivessel disease. So again, the main findings I want you to take away here are the anterolateral findings. So remember those leads that you have to keep in mind. Remember that you're, you want to make sure that you're seeing pathological Q waves. So the width and the depth is important. Okay, you may see poor R wave progression. And again, you want to see no evidence of ST segment elevation. So notice that the ST segment in these leads is not elevated. Okay, it's at 
it's pretty much baseline. So no ST segment elevation. So this is a natural lateral MI patient that had it in the past, actually a few years ago, and uh, was presenting for follow-up. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay, a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling, so uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay, you can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.